with our Assessor of Property Budget Discussions. Uh, we welcome Assessor Vivian Wilhoyt with us today. I know that you've brought a couple folks I'll have you introduce. Uh, before we get there though, I just want to remind the viewers at home that uh, we are likely to hear more requests for funds over the next uh, coming days than we will actually have available revenue. So at the end of all of these discussions, we'll make the, the decisions on how to allocate uh, the resources for the taxpayers of Davidson County in the most efficient and effective way. So we appreciate your time. Assessor Wilhoyt, this is the first time that we've had the chance to, to have you at a budget hearing. Yes. We're happy to see you and happy to have you here. So please introduce who you brought and then we'll go from there. Awesome, thank you. Mayor Barry, Finance Director Oden Hill and Chief Operating Officer Ribling, I am honored and grateful to be here today to provide you with my very first Office of Assessments 2017-2018 budget proposal. While I have made my prints on the office, it is important that the Davidson County property owners know that the assessment office staff is as qualified as ever, and they stand and we stand ready to provide fair, equitable, and transparent valuations. As uh, you've allowed me to do, before I begin, I want to introduce to you some very familiar faces whom I rely upon in addition to the 72 outstanding and credible employees in the office who help us to meet our responsibility of identifying, listing, classifying, and appraising all taxable properties. We have Mr. Jimmy Clary. He's 40 years of service with the Office of Assessment. He's the Deputy Assessor for Residential, Personality, and Commercial Operations. We have with us former clerk and master, attorney Christy Scott. She arrived with me on day one, and she's the deputy assessor of administration. And we have also Mr. Brad Pig. He has been with the assessment office 26 years, and he is the deputy assessor of information and te technology. And while that person's not here at the table with us, but I rely on her as my ride or die as well, <laughs> we have Ms. Tammy Williams. She arrived me also on day one, and she's my executive assistant. So I'm so glad to have them as my team, along with the 72 employees of the Office of Assessment. Um, I want to just say, as taking the office on September 1, we now have um, the, as far as the certification is concerned, a number of employees have allowed to have a go forward to get their certification and continue with that. We have 18, excuse me, 16 Tennessee master appraisers, uh, assessors, and at the level one, we have four. At the level two, we have nine, and level four, we have three. And then we also have three certified assessors. In addition uh, to those um, uh, credentials, we have an assessment administration specialist. We have seven assessment administration se specialists. We have three residential evaluation specialists and one certified mapping specialist. And as far as licenses, uh, we have two certified residential and one general, um, general residential. Um, the 27 reappraisal, I know you're very interested in that as well. Absolutely. And we've been very, very busy, and it's going pretty well. We continue to remain on schedule with our valuation models and de developing them in order to do our mass appraisals. And we expect to mail the property owners in mid, late, mid to late April uh, the valuation notices that will inform property owners of their new property values. <laughs> we believe that it was the proactive approach in this particular year Critically, critically, because it is a reappraisal that everyone expecting us to just go through the roof and what have you, but not necessarily. But there were some objectives we wanted to meet in doing educational outreach. One of the first objectives is to explain why we appraise every four years to help the property owners to understand the process of how we arrive at their values during a reappraisal year versus a non-reappraisal year. Three, we want to empower the property owners with the option to appeal and to also know about the appeals process. Four, we want to increase the awareness of those programs that's that is available through uh, Charlie Cartwell's office, the tax relief, the tax freeze, and the tax deferral. And then also the program that's available through Metro Action Commission, the senior program, which is extremely uh, important. And then of course we want to let uh, taxpayer know that we're not the tax assessor, we are the property assessor. <laughs> right. And then with those objectives, of course, we have gone out as of yesterday, we have done 68 community outreaches that we've conducted to date. We have 14 community outreach to conduct, and we've been doing these outreach events 
in partnership with various community groups as well as all of the council members. We also have utilized a new Twitter, Twitter page as well as a new Facebook page and a, the, the traditional website page, just to let people know, keep in mind where we are in reference to the appraisal. Of course, the critical information they want to find out is where are values. And the heat map is, of course, is extremely popular with right. Davidson Countyans uh, at, this very, at this present time or as of December 1. The countywide average is at 35% uh, average, and that is the average on valuation. And I don't have to remind you, Mayor, but I like to let the viewing audience know that it Please. is an average. It is an average. Right. That means some values are going to be higher than the average. Some are going to be about the same. And some averages are going to be uh, below uh, the countywide average. But nonetheless, keep that in mind. And that is as December 1. And we look forward to providing those final numbers to you and the, um, the property owners of Davidson County by mid to late April. The certified tax rate. <laughs> We know that, of course, Director Reebling is very interested in that as well. Um, and of course, for the viewing audience, to let them know that the certified tax rate is something that we submit to the state and to local government to ensure that Davidson County does not incur a windfall on the existing construction. And of course, with that being said, we are keeping with the promise that we'll be providing to you that certified tax rate that is adjusted. And you should have it anywhere between mid-April to late April, and the, of course, the reason why we are really, um, you know, having to, of course, give it at that time, we want to give it to you sooner. But as you know, we're still in the reappraisal process, and every penny of the certified tax rate, each penny is equivalent to two million dollars. So we want to be right on the penny, and uh, make sure that we don't uh, under uh, provide the tax rate as you want to be right on time. Yep. Moving to our operating budget, yes, the non-reoccurring expenses. Uh, we have requested in the non in the operating budget of the non-reoccurring expenses, hearing officers, postage, postage, and office supplies. Those are our three key points of where we would like to have increase. Of course, why? The reappraisal. You know, of course, with hearing officers, we have budget. Um, we would like to um, get assistance in that area because we really feel like our informals are going to increase by informal appeals are going to increase by 10 percent. So we need to have those hearing officers on board uh, uh, in place so that the taxpayers can be heard uh, as quickly as possible and expi expeditiously as possible through the appeal process. How, course, how many hearing officers do you have at the moment? At the moment when we last checked uh, we have 46 hearing officers. Okay. Uh, we are wanting to exceed 50. We have done a very aggressive approach in reference to um, um, obtaining hearing officers and just so the, the viewing audience know, we look for realtors who have been at least three years in experience, live in Davidson County. There was a time that we could not use realtors, but the Metro Council sometime before, maybe when you and I were sitting on the council, I believe, um, is when uh, we were able to be allowed by the state to use re uh, realtors, which is a great thing. Um, so we're looking forward to reading, exceeding the, the numbers that we need, but of course we also need on the commercial side at least 20. Um, in addition to that, uh, the office supplies, that makes, you know, it goes hand in hand with the postage as well it, that we're asking for as a result of the new reappraisal, as the reappraisal for this year. For the reoccurring expenses in the budget, we're asking for four full-time employees, or FTEs as we, as we call them. This is critical. This is really critical. Because the city is growing, the, the, and it's grown tremendously, and you've done an excellent job in making us the it city and the destination of where people want to come to live and, and, and raise their children and also just to vacate, vacation here. But um, over the last few years, through the growth, our employee staff has been, has decreased. In 2009, we had a staff of 85 position, positions. Currently, we are, assi we are assigned 76 staff positions. Of those 76 positions, 34 are appraisers. These staffing numbers are low when you consider the following increases since 2013. Permits, which is the commercial and industrial permits, they've increased by 8.5%. Total permits, that's demolition, new construction, and additions, which is a good thing. They've increased by 73%. New improvement has increased by 138 percent. 
prorated parcels have increased by 120 percent. Real parcel, real property parcels have increased by 4 percent, or the number that's really key here, 9,641 parcels. So, so, Assessor, let me ask you a question. Since, sure. Since so much of the work had to be done this year with the new with the new assessment, mm -hmm. asking for the three additional appraisers. Four. It, I'm sorry. Yes. Right, sorry. Four mm -hmm. additional appraisers. Mm -hmm. um, do you anticipate that the workload will be more going forward because now that you've just gone through this big assessment, tell me what those four additional appraisers are going to be focused on. Well, they will be focused on uh, identifying, listing, um, classifying, uh, valuing those properties. But there is another key point here in reference to that request. If we continue with the growth, which we all want, if we continue with the growth in a good way, and to keep the same level of employee, employees as far as appraisers are concerned, we will have close to 260,000 parcels within the boundaries of Davidson County. Now, with that change, there is a legislation, the Tennessee Code Annotated 67-1-506A sub, sub 1, and it states, and I won't read it verbatim, but what it basically requires that our office maintain one deputy assessor per 4,500 parcels. So with that being said, in order for us to do our job effectively and be in compliance with the law, we need to allow the hiring <coughs> of additional appraisers. And that's key. We want to be in compliance. So our only capital request in the, in this, in the area of the office is definitely the technology. Um, Davidson County, we've been the bell ringer for many of the counties around Tennessee. And in the budget, we're asking to update our computer aid mass system, uh, also called CAMA. Uh, the purpose, uh, and for the viewing audience, the purpose of the CAMA system is to maintain property data, to value the property, notify owners, and to ensure that the assessment equity through uniform valuations. As you know, the CAMA system has been in place since 1999. Uh, that's when we started that system, and it is purely just out of date. And there is the, a possi the strong possibility that we will not be able to continue to maintain it in, as support in the years to come. We would like to begin the procurement process uh, to run, um, uh, uh, to obtain a new system, uh, or to upgrade the system, in other words, and to run a mock appraisal uh, utilizing the new system by 2018, no later than 2019, so we, we can be ready to use the system without error in 2020. Of course, the next reappraisal is in 2021, but we want to make sure that we don't have any glitches in reference to something as critical as the reappraisal that is done to uh, reestablish equity. The remaining operating costs that we're asking for are just general in nature, tuition, employment, out of travel, for um, education and uniforms. And we stand uh, ready to ask, answer any questions you may have, um, Mayor, Director Riebling, Director O'Donnell, and of course, we're just excited about being here on our first budget presentation. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Assessor. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to just take a moment and recognize that we have uh, uh, Council Member John Cooper with us as well as Council Member uh, Bircher with us. Thank you all for being with us today. Uh, Finance Director. Yeah. I w I'd like for you to talk a little bit more about your capital request okay. um, because we have been talking about this update and the need for this a long time mm -hmm. and I just feel like um, it needs a little bit more attention today. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I don't know if you want to go into the details or if you want your IT, I'm kind of um, looking over there at, mm -hmm. uh, at him, but these, my understanding is the system is um, will no longer be supported right. mm -hmm. in the very near future. So this isn't necessarily just a nice to have upgrade, mm -hmm. but a mandatory upgrade. Absolutely. And I just wanted to make sure you had the opportunity to speak to that. Well, in the four points that I just made, yeah. definitely, it's been, in, it's been in place since 1999, so it's mm -hmm. an old system. Mm -hmm. uh, like any system, you have to upgrade it, and upgrading has happened over the time. 
But in addition to that, we have to remember that supporting it means that it becomes obsolete at some point, even with the vendor. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, there is no doubt in our mind that we do need the new system in order mm -hmm. for us to effectively to be able to provide the service to uh, Nashville, uh, Davidson County, and property owners. And I'll also let my um, information technology deputy assessor to add to that if you like. Yeah. But that is th There's that's it. versions behind my understanding. Uh, yes, and uh, <laughs> it's the, they currently support it now, uh, but in the very near future they won't. They have a new system that right currently doesn't fit our needs. Uh, so we need to get this uh, process started. So, so like uh, Assessor Wilhoy said, that in 2020 we can have our first assessment rollout. Mm -hmm. So this is about a two million dollar capital request. Yes. Correct. Strange. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, and it is the backbone of their entire operation. The backbone, and it definitely helps us to bring in uh, well over $2 million in, in property valuations to provide to the taxpayers. But yes, definitely. This is something that's extremely key. Mm -hmm. Is it a new system or just an upgrade, you think? New. So you're going to yes. go through the whole process, those RFP and all that. Yes. yes. So it's not just yes. it's not something you can upgrade. you got to right. start all That's over. correct. That's correct. It is a system that we're going to have to put out in order to find what identify with another vendor or the existing vendor our needs, and so that RFP would be required. It's going to take a while to get this going. Yes, it's mm -hmm. not something that's going to, you can't just snap your fingers. Right. right. And when you think about the way Nashville is growing, we also want to be able to also look at other ways that we can be creative with our system to provide more information that you may be wanting to utilize. So, but for right now, just the bare minimum is what we need to definitely put in place mm -hmm. and for the new system. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just, to, just it would be helpful to kind of know, I don't need to know right now, but just over the next couple of weeks, sort of the timing of the need for that money, because mm -hmm. it'll help us think about whether um, bond okay. finance or 4% is appropriate okay. for something like this. Okay. $2 million you might need at the end of the day, but you don't need all $2 million. You need a commitment that you're going to have it, but you don't need all the money today. So if we could sort of exactly. sort of see exactly. how you think the, the money might be needed, it would just be helpful for us for planning kind of what's the most appropriate way to come right. up with that money. I agree, we, we've got to do it. It's just a matter of, of what pot we pull it from right. and, and how the money is needed would be helpful to know. Okay. Time Very good point. Um, and, and going to the one of the points I've made, we want to begin the procurement process. Right. So beginning the procurement process, I don't know if it necessarily means that, you know, you have to earmark the whole mil two million now, yeah, but to I know that we, we have the support of the administration right. to yeah. begin the process. I, I think we could start. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. gut yeah. feeling. I don't. I need to cut you off. Sorry. Apologize. No worries. Is, no worries. Is, is, I don't know why you wouldn't go ahead and start the process yeah. sooner rather than later. And well, we I mean, want to make is, sure we have the yeah, money. No, I understand. And the support. This is, sort of, this is sort of kind of fundamental to the whole. <laughs> sure. Which is why we're here. <laughs> yeah. Last time I looked, it was about fifty percent of the budget came from the property yeah. tax. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, I don't yeah. see that changing. And, so. and, and thank you for making that point because fifty percent of the that was makes it so very critical, Director Ribley, because fifty percent of what we in reference to our our ta our, our assessment role and with the tax rate, it does make this critical because we do help to support fifty percent of the city's revenue yeah. operation. I was thinking working with so, finance office yes. and procurement start yeah. the process sooner yeah. rather than later. Yes. And, Mm -hmm. And I, I would think that I don't know how anybody could be opposed to this. Okay. Something we have Thank to you aid. for that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. We'll try not to go over the two million. Anticipate. Well, try. <laughs> try. <laughs> so we went from no, we went from nothing to two million in the first meeting, and suddenly we're done. No, but seriously, but thank you so much. We appreciate yeah. that support. Let's That's start, let's awesome. Start the procurement process. Working okay. with the appropriate departments awesome. that need to be involved, um, and uh, mm -hmm. director will help you. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Any yeah. other comments from you or okay. from you? I don't understand. Any, Any final thoughts? Well, um, I'm excited and I'm grateful. Yeah. We're excited too. Thank you so all for the opportunity. I just want I just want certified tax rate number. So <laughs> <laughs> she mentioned that already. And we, we yeah. said we'll have it to you and we'll keep it with our promise and when we get it to you. And I, 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 we I, think so that you're mid to late really, April. So we look at mm -hmm. December first, I don't think there's any change in the uh, value. I mean nothing's going down, is it? No, yeah. no, no, nothing's going down. Um, like Nashville, we're going on the up, and it's a good way. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Assessor, we appreciate your time. Appreciate Thank you all for being here. We appreciate Thanks. you, too. Thanks. Thank you. Have a blessed week. You, too.